Whenever I teach a Prajagi workshop, I start by telling people that the Prajagi reversible patchwork seams are different than quarter inch patchwork seams. And so the regular rules don't apply. But what are the rules for Prajagi seams? Today, I'm going to share what the rules are and explain why most of the time it doesn't really even matter. Welcome to EBITDA Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. When I talk about the rules of the seam, I'm just talking about the characteristics of the seam and how it acts and how the seams interact with each other. So the rules of a regular quilting seam are pretty basic. When you sew, you put your fabrics right sides together and then stitch a quarter of an inch seam. And that means that when you want to know the size of your finished piece, you can calculate that by subtracting a half an inch. So for example, if you have a piece that is four and a half inches square, then when it's in your finished product, it will be four inches square. So that is pretty simple. But Pujagi seam allowances are much more complex and there are much more involved um, rules to think about in this. Now, quick disclaimer, most of the time, these rules don't even matter. When I'm doing Pujagi patchwork, I don't even think about these rules. I just put pieces together and let them fall as they're going to fall. You don't need to sweat about all these rules. Pojagi patchwork is not designed for precision piecing. And when you see these rules, you'll understand why. However, sometimes people want to learn themselves and some people really want to try precision piecing with this technique. So if you just want to understand how Pujagi seams work, these are the five basic rules that they follow. The first rule to know about Pujagi seam allowances is that the seam allowances are different. In a regular quarter inch seam, you have your good side and then the seam allowances are hidden on the back side. But Pujagi seam allowances are reversible, so there's no right side and wrong side. And the seam allowances are built into the finished fabric. Because of the technique, it's very difficult to get an exact seam allowance. If you want to know how to do this seam, you can check this video, which has a full tutorial. But normally I say close enough is good enough. You have to keep in mind that these seam allowances are different and that will make a difference in all your calculations that you do. The second rule about Pujagi seam allowances applies if you're using fabric that does have a right side and a wrong side. If you're using fabric like that, then the key to remember is to keep all the right side of the fabric on the same side of your project, you need to stitch either right sides together or wrong sides together. Both of those will help your project finish in the way that you want. You can see example of this in my stacked bars placemat tutorial. The third rule has to do with the stitching lines. The bottom of the bottom fabric that you add is going to end up with two rows of stitching. So when I'm talking about two rows of stitching, I'm talking about in the seam how one side has two visible rows of stitching and the other side has one row of visible stitching. Now I treat these as reversible. I don't worry about which side has which, but I know for some people it really bothers them and they want to have all the double rows of stitching on the same side. So here's how you can tell where your two rows of stitching is going to be. The bottom of the bottom fabric is going to have two rows of stitching. So if I'm joining this blue fabric onto this white fabric and I join it like this, that means that this side of the blue fabric is going to end up with two rows of stitching. So then in this situation, I would have two rows of stitching here and two rows of stitching here. However, if I join this with the white fabric um, on the bottom, that means this side of the white fabric is going to have two rows of stitching. 
And that would leave two rows of stitching here and one here, two rows here and one here. And so sometimes if you really want to um, get them all the same, you'll need to think about how you're joining, which one's on top, but also which orientation this is gonna be. So if you turn this one over, then put the white one on the bottom, then you would end up with two rows of stitching on the same side. So it's a little bit complex, but the more you do these seams, the more natural it will become to think about how it's gonna end up. The fourth rule is the side that is facing up will end up on the bottom of the seam allowance. In a Pajagi seam allowance, there's always one fabric that goes over top of the other one. And it's different on each side. So on this side, the white fabric goes over the blue. And on the other side, the blue fabric goes over the white. In all my patterns, there's only one spot where this matters a little bit. And that is in the winter snowflake window hanging. When you're doing the initial strip set, you'll be more happy with your piece if you have one snowflake strip where the white fabric goes over both of the background fabrics and one strip where the background fabric goes over the white on both sides. So when it's sitting on a table, it looks like you have a narrow white strip and a wide white strip. And of course, on the other side, it is reversed. Now, if you don't get that right, it will still look great as a window hanging, but this will help it look even, even when it's not hanging in a window. And the trick to figuring out which fabric is going to go over the other fabric actually depends on how you lay out your fabric that you're joining your piece to. So if I'm joining this blue piece onto this white piece, I need to look at what is the orientation of the piece I have laying down. The side that's facing up is going to end up being on the bottom of your seam allowance. So just for demonstration, I'm going to call this one side A and then this one side B. And you can see on side A, white goes over top of the blue one. Now if I join another piece to here, this side A fabric is going to be on the bottom. I put the blue on there and the uh, white is underneath the blue. And it doesn't matter if I have the blue fabric on top or if I have the blue fabric on the bottom. When I finish the seam, the uh, blue seam is going to go over top of the white. If I turn it over, now this white fabric is going to be on the bottom. So I put the blue on there, now the white is on the bottom. So if I want to have this seam so that the white fabric goes over both sides, the trick is I need to turn this over and stitch it from this side. Then this will be on the bottom. When I turn it over, it'll be on the top on both sides. So this is a little tricky to wrap your mind around, but just remember that it has to do with the, how you lay out this piece and this side is going to be on the bottom of your seam. And the fifth thing to remember is that matching seams is difficult and sometimes impossible. So once you've done a few of these seams, you'll see how matching seams can be very difficult. So I have two pieces here and I'm just gonna pin them together to kind of demonstrate matching the seams. And we can see um, up here on this seam, these two seams do match. The um, blue corners and the white corners line up together. These seams down here, this seam kind of matches. We could probably fudge that one, one to match. And the one on the bottom 
doesn't really match. But then we'll see when we turn it over, this seam that matched on the top, it matches again on this side. Yay! This seam that matched, it doesn't match at all on this side. And this seam that doesn't match also doesn't match on this side. So we can see how difficult it is to try and match seams, especially when you get into more and more complex problems. The other thing to keep in mind with this seam where it does match, that also means that there's gonna be many, many layers of fabric in that seam. And that's gonna be very difficult to stitch over top. So that's why in my pieces, generally, I try to avoid matching seams altogether. So I would offset seams and not even have them line up. And this difficulty is just with straight seams. When you start getting angled seams, it becomes even more difficult. And sometimes it's even physically impossible. So I hope that now you understand why precision piecing with Pajagi seam allowances is so difficult and sometimes even impossible. So because of all these things, that's why I like to just relax and enjoy this seam technique for what it is instead of trying to force it into Western quilting rules. Be free and spontaneous. Don't worry about what fabric's on top, what fabric has two rows of stitching and what has only one. Just join pieces together and get a fun project that you can enjoy and be proud of. If you're looking for more tutorials for projects that you see seams, then you can click the link below or check out EBITDA Studio. And I also have a number of patterns available that mostly ignore these rules. So for all this and other Pajagi inspiration, be sure to check out my website, ebitistudio.com.